It's Sharticles time again, but this week... Special Celebrity Sharticle Guest Extra People. Bartians! Man dies under six tonne of porn. It actually says Daily Mailman dies under six tonne of porn. Is Daily Mailman like a superhero? Well, Daily Mailman, yes. He, he, uh, he sits there in his room and uh, hates other races, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much everything else. That's that one of his him. superpowers, his racism. Uh, yeah. He's also got a sideline in chauvinism and uh, hating spicy food. But now he's died under six tonnes of pornography. A lonely Japanese man who amassed oh. more than six tonnes of porn died when a huge pile of magazines fell on top of him. And even more tragically, the man's body was only discovered six months later when the landlord entered the flat to find out why the rent had not been paid. <laughs> oh, he that's spent it all not on a porn. nice find. Oh. The man's lowly death. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, Christ! <laughs> Don't get too the poor judgmental. man's you... lonely, lonely death, the sad, wanking man. <laughs> was revealed by a member of the cleaning team. That's also my job yeah. title. <laughs> Who said his body had been hired to remove the magazines discreetly in a way that would not be noticed by neighbours <laughs> and the man's family to save him from the shame. Didn't do a very good job, did they? It's been reported in a British newspaper. <laughs> his company, yeah, his company's awful. Porn be gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Yes, my job. I collect old porn mags. Yes, give us a shout. I'll be round in the van. <coughs> it's all above board. It was unclear if he'd suffered a heart attack and fallen into the stacks of magazines, which had then fallen on top of them, oh. or whether he had been crushed by the mass of paper. See, the latter is what I was... Uh, is more dramatic, isn't Yes, it? much you know, more. You can see him there going, oh, mm, no, I did that last week. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a quite rare Bukaki mag at the, uh, <laughs> at the bottom, and unfortunately yeah. he didn't know. It was actually a, an essential support for the whole uh, mass It was a structural it. Bukaki mag. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. The irony was all the pages were stuck together anyway. <laughs> the cleaner said if he was still conscious, the paper probably would have muffled his cries. No shit. Six, <laughs> six tons of magazine. You ever tried crying through one of six tons of magazines? <laughs> well, not yet, but it's a life goal. Yeah. <laughs> there were also clippings from erotic magazines where it appeared the man had cut out his favourite articles. <laughs> he only it. reads it for the articles. <laughs> <laughs> and thrown away the rest of the magazine. Despite his trimming, at the time of his death, the collection weighed in at six metric tons which is 13,228 pounds. Six metric tonnes of pornography. Had he not discovered the internet, he could have fitted all that in a couple of hard drives. Uh, I think, you know, when people are on the analogue wanking, they don't want to go digital, really, you know what I mean? <laughs> the analogue wanking... It's got a different, whole different f feel. The smell of the paper, the crispness. Do you think it's part of, part of the ritual? You know, it's, yeah, it's like, ooh, where's the porn? Oh, it's over there, not just like porn. <laughs> Where is the beauty and where is the magic yeah. of pornography these days? You know, days? we are hunter-gatherers. Mr Dan Tomlinson, everyone. Hi. Hey. Hello. Cheers. Thank you for filling this gap that Barry has left in our souls. That's, that's quite all right. I'm always about on short notice. The Telegraph. Court refuses trial by combat. <laughs> Mortal combat. Yeah. <laughs> First to three, but you can't pick Raiden. <laughs> a court has rejected a 60-year-old man's attempt to invoke the ancient right to trial by combat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is getting better. Rather than pay a £25 fine for a minor motoring offence. <laughs> I will kill you all. <laughs> Leon Humphreys remained adamant yesterday that his right to fight a champion nominated by the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, the DVLA, was still valid under European human rights legislation. He said it would have been a reasonable way to settle the matter. <laughs> so they expected the DVLA to go through their ranks of employees and say, <laughs> which of you is the best fighter? Fighter? Is it like, um, yeah. <laughs> is it just fisticuffs or are they allowed to kind of like choose weapons or is it, is it like, That's what's, a good what's, yeah. what's the actual rules here? Magistrates sitting at Bury St Edmunds on Friday had disagreed and instead of accepting his offer to take on a clerk from Swansea with samurai swords. Oh, wow. Gurkha knives. Or heavy hammers? <laughs> what? Nah. Heavy hammers? <laughs> Find him £200 with £100 costs. So if you um, were in this gentleman's position and you wanted to fight, what weapon would you go with? 
That's hard, isn't it? I mean, Gurkha knives, heavy hammers, samurai swords, I don't know. Old straight sword, a good long sword, good British long sword. Yeah, see, I would. Yeah. I, I feel like samurai sword, but that's just, that's just the romantic in there. It, it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, get a katana. <laughs> After entering a not guilty plea, he threw down his unconventional challenge. Humphreys from Bury St Edmunds, there's the answer. My dad was born in Bury St Edmunds. <laughs> He's always trying to fight people to the death. Said, I was willing to fight a champion put up by the DVLA, but it would have been a fight to the death. Amazing. The DVLA don't pay that much, mate. So Nobody's going to take that on. That's such a strange thing. It's the fact that it is kind of romanticised with words like champion. Yes. I want to be a champion of the DVLA. Yes. <laughs> when I worked for the insurance company Norwich Union many, many years ago, there was a brilliant letter sent in by a man who uh, had had a property he owned uh, caught fire, burnt down, and they wouldn't pay out the insurance okay. because uh, it had been left unoccupied for more than three months, which invalidates all insurance. You've got to have somebody in uh, every three months sort of thing. And he was very angry about it, and he offered the whole of Norwich Union out for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but he worded it in such a way as he would fight all of Norwich Union. <laughs> so it'd be like him on one side, on the other side, just thousands of employees, old men in suits, whipping chains round and stuff. Like, it doesn't matter how good you are at fighting, <laughs> you are not going to be able to take on thousands of people. It's like weird Mad Max kind of like apocalypse kind of yeah. thing in my head. It's so strange. My That's house amazing. is burnt down. It's like Mad Max for me, right? I'm going to take you all on. <laughs> And our next special guest is Izzy, who controls the cameras. Yeah. So we can't move too much at the moment. <laughs> it's from the Metro. The Metro. So you know it's going to be good, because the newspaper's free. Shopkeeper forced to change Singsbury's name. Oh, and chooses Morrisings. <laughs> so this man's surname is Sing, and has called his shop Singsbury. And Mr Sainsbury didn't like it, by the sounds of it. I respect that. The 42-year-old businessman changed the name of his store in West Allotment, North Tyneside, West Allotment. <laughs> to Morrisings after being encouraged to do so by his customers. Mr Nagra said, A lot of the customers come in here for the banter more than the actual service. That's a, that's a good business model. Yeah, I mean. that, that doesn't work. Yeah. See, that's what we've tried to do with Barshans, and yeah, banter. we're all starving in a ditch. The sign makes us a talking point. I do feel that the sign is bringing more business in, he added. If I get asked to take this one down... I will fight for it. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In 2012, Sainsbury's contacted the family, threatening legal action and asking them to remove the sign. How? It's a tiny shop in the most vague place. I wish we had a picture of the logo he had up to see if he'd tried to copy yeah. it. Yeah. Although we can see his new Morrisings one and he has kind of copied the style of writing and almost exactly copied the logo. That's brilliant. But there's a lot of examples of this, I think. And have you seen, uh, what is it, Sam 99P? That's literally the Tesco logo, but. like ripped off. And that's a chain, that's a big chain. But they're coming, they're coming after the little man. It's because he can't fight back the bullies. Within 24 hours of posting a picture of his shop on Facebook, complete with the brand new Morrising sign and name, the photo has been shared 10,000 times by him. <laughs> Regular customer Sarah Shields wrote, This guy is great. The sign makes me laugh every time I go past. Nice bloke too. Barsings. Barsings. Get in touch, Mr. Nagra. You can use our name for only one penny a year. Actually, I think we're, we're pricing ourselves out of the market yeah. with that. <laughs> And our next special guest, it's Mr. Paul Gannon. So, uh, I have a lovely story for us. Oh, God. Shall I crack it open like a beautiful bottle of fizz? Please do, and then we can have uh, foam all down our trousers. This is from the Daily Slap. Oh, that good. Can, do, can I read this one? Yes, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, you can read the headline <clears throat> okay. article. Eli is a big, smelly bumhead. Yes. <laughs> It has been confirmed today that Eli Silverman, aged 50, can be legally called a big smelly bumhead, effective as of time of this publication. Mm. The crown had previously been held by eight-year reigning champion Dirty Ronnie, <laughs> but reluctantly gave up the prestigious award to the new King of Stink. Mm. I fought hard to keep this award, says Ronnie, but Eli put in a good effort this year and it is very well deserved. Ronnie went on to lament... I don't know what I will do with myself now. That crown was good for cleaning out my mucky feet. Poor old dirty Ronnie. Every year the annual Who's a Big Smelly Bumhead Award takes place <laughs> throughout the UK to find that special someone who can be smelly, mm. repulsive, pitied 
and annoyed by. Although not knowingly entered into the competition, Eli won anyway, with a massive 89% of the public vote. Excellent. Good work. Good work. When asked about this magnificent achievement, Eli said, What? So what? I'm supposed to be happy about this? Am I meant to feel some sort of achievement? This is the worst day of my life. You're a dick. How about that? <laughs> it was this sort of cheery banter that made Eli a clear winner this year. As part of his new duties as Big Smelly Bumhead, he will be in Swansea Town Centre in August for the annual opening of the Bishop's Bowels, <laughs> where Eli will get the honour of holding the Holy Cup under the Bishop. So congratulations to Eli Silverman there, a well-deserved win. Is, is there a picture? Uh, yes, there is a picture. Jesus Christ on a tricycle. That's his acting profile picture. That's the one he sends out for adverts and um, prostitution. Th that's just terrifying on multiple levels. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Eli? Fuck you! <laughs>